Servlet is the core of any Java web applications. As a developer, you and I create a class which is qualified as a servlet and then a web container like Apache Tomcat will instantiate and manage its lifecycle. In order for a class to qualify as a servlet, it must implement the servlet interface from Java x.servlet package. This interface has five method signatures, init, service, destroy, which are considered as lifecycle methods, and the two additional functions which are getters called get servlet info and get servlet config. When your application is deployed onto a web container such as Apache Tomcat, it reads all the information about the application either from the web.xml or from annotations of all the classes found in the class path. If the web container comes across a servlet class, it creates an object of the same and then calls its init method. The init method receives an instance of servlet config containing some config information about the servlet such as init parameters. In our servlet, we have to store this config object as a member variable and then return the same via the get servlet config method. This method is usually required by the web container and we may never use it at all. Once the servlet is instantiated and initialized, it is ready to serve any HTTP client requests and these requests are handled by the service lifecycle method. So whenever a client makes a request to a particular servlet, the web container creates objects of servlet request and servlet response and passes them to the service method of our servlet object. This is where we have to handle the client request and produce an appropriate HTTP response. The third lifecycle method, which is called destroy, gets executed by the web container when the servlet is being removed from the container, which generally happens when the application is being shut down. The get servlet info method is expected to return a string representing a small piece of information about the servlet, which is usually used by admin consoles to display information about all the servlets that have been loaded into the container. The servlet API provides a class called generic servlet, which implements the servlet interface. The generic servlet class implements all the methods from the servlet interface except the service method. So instead of our class implementing all methods of the servlet interface, by extending the generic servlet class, now our class may have to implement only the service method which is abstract. The rest of the contract methods from servlet interface have some appropriate and meaningful code in the generic servlet class. The servlet API also provides a class called HTTP servlet, which inherits from generic servlet. This class implements the contract service method as well. Apart from the contract service method, it also provides different variants of the service method. Notice the do functions which intend to handle the corresponding HTTP methods. For example, the do get method is invoked when the client makes an HTTP get request and the do post is invoked when the client makes HTTP post request. So the most common approach to create a servlet class is to extend the HTTP servlet class and override one of the do methods as per our requirement. When a client makes a request, the web container invokes the contract service method on our servlet object, which then converts the parameters into their HTTP versions and invoke another service method provided by the HTTP servlet class. This second service method checks the HTTP method used by the client such as get or post and then invokes the corresponding do method such as do get or do post. So in our servlet class, we must override a specific do function in order to handle a specific HTTP method. Otherwise, the web container responds with an error code 405 indicating the servlet does not handle such a request. Here is an example of a typical servlet class. The service method, in this case the doGet method has two parameters supplied by the web container. The first one is HTTP servlet request which has access to everything that the client has sent. This includes the request parameters, headers, cookies, etc. The second parameter is of type HTTP response which has access to an output stream so that we can write our HTML response to the client. So using a request, we can read all inputs from the user and using response, we can give our HTML content to the client. Before writing any content to the client, we must set the MIME type of our output. MIME is an acronym for Multipurpose Internet Mail Extension. 
which only describe what kind of data that we are giving. Is it HTML, is it a CSV or is it a binary data like a PDF etc. Here is how you can set the MIME type. You call the set content type function on the response object and supply the appropriate MIME type. Using the HTTP servlet response object, we can get an output stream which may be a character stream or a binary stream. Most of the time we want to write a text content. So in order to get a character output stream, we can simply call response.getWriter function, which returns an instance of print writer. We can use any of the print or println or printf methods provided by the print writer to generate our response. Make sure you close the writer object. Otherwise, the client may not get the actual HTML content because these are all buffered output streams. In the next lecture, let's create our first servlet class.